The early 2010s were a golden era for horror movies, and the VHS film series remains to be one of the most popular franchises that defined this time period. Created by a horror specialist website called Bloody Disgusting, the VHS film series were typically an anthology of several short stories by multiple directors, and they were released back to back from 2012 to 2014. Later, a reboot series was released in 2021, which paved the way for two more reboots in 2022 and 2023. Surely there's no shortage of VHS horror content, and today we've taken it upon ourselves to rank every single VHS movie in existence. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. VHS 2 2013. To kick off this list, we have VHS 2, a direct sequel to the first release in the franchise. This anthology film came out in 2013, and it was sponsored by Bloody Disgusting as well. While some of the directors from VHS returned for the sequel, the anthology had plenty of new talent and followed a format similar to the original. The movie kicks off with Larry, a private detective, and his girlfriend Aisha as they embark on several missions to track down criminals or help locate missing people. This time around, a woman hires them to find her missing son, and they travel to his dormitory to find the place entirely deserted. While Larry tries to look for clues around the place, Aisha finds a bunch of VHS tapes and a laptop that is still recording, and the tape seems to be the same as the last movie. Soon enough, she presses play on it, and the first short story, Phase 1 Clinical Trials, starts playing. Directed by Adam Wingard, this short story focuses on an unusual eye implant that records everything, but there's a lot more than what what meets the eye. While the doctor assures his patient, Herman, that the implant might glitch every now and then, he does not expect to see strange spirits. He meets a woman named Clarissa, who tells him that the company's implants attract spirits who rely on their energy to keep going. As Herman desperately tries to get rid of the implant, one of these spirits tries to stop him and eventually kills him in the process. As this tape ends, Aisha worries about its contents while Larry asks her to keep watching them. Soon enough, she presses play on the second story, A Ride in the Park, which was directed by Eduardo Sanchez and Greg Hale. This story follows a mountain biker named Mike, who rides around the woods and stumbles upon a woman asking for help. He soon learns that she has been infected by zombies, and Mike does not have a lot of time before she bites him and passes on the infection. As they both struggle to keep their primal urges in control, they end up at a girl's birthday party and have a hard time trying to control themselves. The party soon turns into a massacre, and Mike starts chasing after the children when he accidentally calls his girlfriend. He snaps back into his senses upon hearing her voice, but the zombie infection starts seeping further into his veins, and he shoots himself with a gun to prevent hurting anyone else. The third tape was directed by Timo Chianto and Gareth Hugh Evans, and it was titled Safe Havens. It followed an interview between a bunch of documentary makers who end up in a whole lot of trouble when they agree to film a cult in Indonesia. They soon realize that the cult is filled with sex practices and ritualistic sacrifices, and they try to remain professional and interview the cult's leader when they learn that they are about to commit ritual suicide. Things only keep worsening for the documentary makers, Adam and Lena, as they watch some of their friends die in front of them. Moreover, Lena reveals that she is pregnant and wants to have an abortion, but the short film ends on a horrifying note as she dies after giving birth. Moreover, the infant turns out to be a monstrous creature, and Adam is left all alone to deal with his baby. As the movie inches closer to the last sequence, Aisha is engrossed in the tapes while a creature lurks in the background. Eventually, Larry comes back to her and finds her body on the ground, and he starts panicking when he finds a tape labeled Watch. He then presses play on the last segment, Slumber Party Alien Abduction, directed by Jason Eisner. This segment kicks off with siblings Randy and Gary as they stir up trouble for their parents and get told off. They soon visit their sister Jen, and the two boys seem to have a few more tricks up their sleep. They decide to prank Jen, her boyfriend Zach, and their other friends, and even start making loud moaning noises in the middle of the night. As Zach starts chasing them, the two boys run around with their cameras when Zach snatches it away and gives it to Jen. While all this chaos keeps them from sleeping, they also experience constant earthquakes and eventually realize that aliens have managed to land on their property. Their troubles seem to be far from over, as the aliens start attacking and abducting them, and this seems to be too much for Larry to watch. 
watch. He ends up pausing the tape, but soon resumes it to find some footage of Kyle, the missing boy. In the video, Kyle tries to take his own life, but fails to do so, and Larry realizes that he might still be around. However, they seem to be doomed from the second they stepped into the house, and the anthology wraps up with Larry and Aisha dying, and we learn that the entire case was a ruse to lure them and then kill them. As far as VHS tapes go, this sequel is considered to be the best addition to the franchise. It has themes ranging from alien abduction to supernatural creatures, cults and experiments gone wrong, and it's everything one wants from a horror anthology in a neat package. VHS 2 received rave reviews from audiences and critics alike, and we especially recommend this one if you want to get into the franchise or even enjoy an evening full of jump scares and spine-chilling revelations. VHS Beyond 2024 VHS Beyond is the latest release in the franchise, and it's already received such wonderful reviews that it's the second best film according to our ranking. The film involves five segments that are tied together by the frame narrative Abduction Adduction. The narrative follows a Redditor who bought a bunch of cassettes from a flea market, whose contents claimed to be about an alien encounter. As we delve into the actual tapes, the first story, titled Stork, was written by Jordan Downey and Kevin Stewart, and it follows a bunch of baby disappearances. When a police unit looks into the disappearances, they arrest two men named Segura and E.T. for kidnapping the babies. They also drive to their houses and uncover some of these creatures known as brooders. It seems like brooders were infants subjected to experimentations that would cause them to grow beaks resembling storks, among other things. Moreover, these infants, or the brooders, soon start feasting on E.T.'s brain, and the police officers have no option but to team up with Segura to kill every last one of the babies to prevent any outbreaks. The second segment, Dream Girl, was directed by Virat Paul and was set all the way in Mumbai, India. The story follows a Bollywood actress named Tara while one of the local paparazzi, Arnab, grows increasingly obsessed with fame. As he tries to get famous, he ends up sneaking into her trailer and even tries to reassure her while she deals with an infuriating director. Soon enough, Tara seeks inspiration from his words and rips her face off to reveal her true demon persona before going on a rampage to kill the director as well as everyone else on the set. She finally approaches Arnab and rips his face off while declaring that she will now use his face to rule the world as a common nobody. While this story takes us on a journey in the life of a supernatural creature turned superstar, an interlude emphasizes the existence of alien entities out there in the universe. The next tape, Live and Let Dive, was directed by Justin Martinez, and it followed Zack as he celebrated his birthday day with his wife Jess and his best friend Logan, among other acquaintances. While they skydive as a part of the celebration, they spot a UFO, and Zack even has the misfortune of witnessing one of the aliens kill someone. He immediately rushes to his group to find that the aliens have murdered his wife, and he tries his best to evade them before they spot him as well. Zack even attempts to hide at a farm, but all his attempts result in failure as the aliens spot him, and the tape comes to an end. Directed by Christian and Justin Long, the next tape was titled Fur Babies, and it was an alarming tale of a supposed dog daycare center that keeps taxidermies of all past dogs. While an animal rights group tries to investigate the owner, Becky, she reveals that she did not have the heart to bury her past pets and that the taxidermies help her feel safe and protected in her home. Eventually, the group digs deeper into her daycare center and discovers that Becky kept her past pets so that she could capture humans and try to create a dog-human hybrid. They return to the place to put a stop to her insanity, but things take a turn for the worse as one of Becky's hybrid creatures steps up and kills them all. The final tape in the anthology, Stowaway, was directed by Kate Siegel, and it followed a woman named Haley as she tried to collect proof of extraterrestrial life in the Mojave Desert. Eventually, she stumbles upon a spaceship and explores its insides when she accidentally injures herself. However, the injury creates a whole lot of trouble for her as the ship is home to all forms of animal DNA, and Haley panics as she starts mutating. While the nanomachines in the ship heal her, Haley cannot do anything to stop the mutations altogether, and the tape comes to an end as she realizes that she is stuck in a cycle of healing and mutating. VHS Beyond truly does a terrific job of sticking to themes of alien life and human hybrid creations, and it's been executed so well that the movie has already won over the hearts of the viewers in barely a month. It's also been dubbed as one of the franchise's best installments, with nail-biting story arcs and gripping plot lines 
lines that are bound to leave the audience gasping for breath. The tapes keep the suspense alive until the last second, while the interludes tie all the stories together while keeping the alien theme alive. Come on! VHS 2012. Ranked at number three, we have VHS, the first film in the franchise that won over the audience's hearts and inspired a bunch of other installments. Bloody Disgusting sponsored the movie and got a bunch of directors together to create a horror movie like no other, and the mainframe of the story, aka Tape 56, actually follows a bunch of social misfits who stumble upon a bunch of VHS tapes in the house of a dead man. As they press play on the first tape, Amateur Night, we're sucked into a world of found footage that explores all all sorts of horror themes and entities. Directed by David Bruckner, the first tape follows three friends in a motel room as they fit a hidden camera and try to lure women into coming back to the room with them. One of them even ends up assaulting a girl, much to the other two's disgust. But he soon gets his karma as the girl turns out to be a monster. She soon sprouts fangs and sinks her teeth into one of them before making her way to the other two to kill them all. This story leaves us all in utter shock, while the second tape, Second Honeymoon, kicks off. Directed by none other than Ty West, the tape follows a young couple on a second honeymoon to a Wild West theme park. As they wander around the park, they come across a fortune-telling machine that tells the girl that she will reunite with a loved one. As the story progresses, the couple get intimate with one another while an intruder sneaks into their room and steals some of the husband's money. This soon leads to a heated argument between the couple, while the intruder comes back and kills the husband. As the tape comes to an end, we learn that the wife had a lesbian lover the whole time, and the intruder Intruder takes off her mask to reunite with her one true love after getting rid of the husband for good. After some good old-fashioned romance, the horror creeps back in the third tape Tuesday the 17th, which was directed by Glenn McQuay. This tape follows a group of 20-year-olds named Joey, Wendy, Samantha, and Spider as they plan a camping trip. As they arrive at the camp, they learn that the woods are home to a strange creature, and it doesn't take long before the creature appears before them, killing Samantha and Spider. Soon after, Wendy reveals that she knows all about the creature and that she's going to prove its existence by informing the police, while Joey's baffled at the fact that she lured them in just so the creature could kill them. However, he doesn't have much time as the killer slits his throat next while Wendy tries to make a run for her life. She believes that she might be able to evade the killer, but her beliefs are shattered as the monster eventually sneaks up on her and claims her life as well. Directed by Joe Swanberg, the next tape was titled The Sick Thing That Happened to Emily When She Was Younger. As the title suggests, the tape focuses on Emily as she tries to talk about the strange things she had felt and encountered in her home while her boyfriend James tries to reassure her. He convinces her that she's alright, but his beliefs are soon shattered when she calls him one night and he spots a strange creature in her home. Moreover, Emily starts cutting up her arm after noticing a bump, and James rushes to her home to take care of her. He also seems to be in cahoots with some aliens, who had seemingly fitted a tracker onto Emily's arm. While we learn that James has been plotting with aliens to use Emily as an incubator for a hybrid alien-human baby, Emily confesses that she has a schizoaffective disorder and convinces James to leave her for another seemingly ordinary girlfriend. While he takes her leave, the tape ends with him luring in another woman with a similar bump on her arm, suggesting that he's found a new victim to grow the hybrid baby. As the movie inches close to its end, the last sequence was directed by Radio Silence and was labeled 1031-1998. As the title suggests, the tape covers the events of Halloween 1998, as four friends sneak into a haunted house for a party and soon find themselves in the middle of strange cult rituals. However, they continue to believe that this is part of an elaborate prank, and they almost get killed when they somehow escape the house. They also rescue a girl who is almost about to be sacrificed in the ritual, but their relief turns to horror again as the girl bursts into a flock of birds and disappears. They soon realize that the girl was haunted as well, and while they evade her, death seems to be on their cards that night as a freight train crashes into their car and kills them all. VHS was undoubtedly an intriguing and bold concept in the world of horror, with tales that expand across various genres packed into one anthology series. It was pretty well received, and the franchise
likewise went on to make bolder, more refreshing films after the success of the first one. In a way, VHS perfectly encapsulates the themes of the entire franchise, with stories that range from strange cults, alien invasions, the world of spirits, and experimentations on the human body. While it's not the top most ranked movie in the franchise, it is certainly the film that started it all, and it deserves a whole lot of credit for popularizing the concept of horror anthologies. VHS 94, 2021. VHS 94 was the fourth installment in the franchise, and it broke several records in terms of viewership upon its release in 2021. The movie's segments are centered around a bunch of cassettes that are discovered by a SWAT team while exploring an abandoned warehouse that was known for being the site of a ritualistic mass suicide. The SWAT team soon dives into the VHS tape recordings, beginning with Storm Drain. This tape was directed by Chloe Okuno, and it kicked off with a commercial for a veggie masher before before the news covered a local legend named Ratman. While the reporters try to track him down, they discover that the creature is a grotesque hybrid between a man and a rat, and he is called Ratma. Moreover, the creature vomits all over the reporting crew and kills one of them while the other one is brainwashed by the cult. However, she still manages to escape, and the tape ends with her in the newsroom as she wraps up a segment with a chant of Hail Ratma. The next segment, The Empty Wake, was written and directed by Simon Barrett, and it followed a young woman named Haley, who hosted a wake for Andrew Edwards. Haley soon picks up on some strange noises from the casket, while a mysterious man briefly attends the wake and leaves after muttering an incantation. Soon enough, the lights go off, and Haley realizes that the casket is empty as soon as the lights come back. She rushes around to find the corpse, only to be confronted by Andrew's reanimated corpse. As the tape wraps up, Haley is doomed as Andrew sets his eyes on her, and even possesses her to crawl out of the window and escape. The third tape, aka The Subject, was directed by Timo Chianto, and it followed a man who woke up out of nowhere to find out that his legs have been replaced by mechanical spider legs. He then comes across Dr. Suhendra, a crazed scientist obsessed with replacing human body parts with mechanical enhancements to create the perfect hybrid. Over time, one of his patients turns into a perfect cyborg with the ability to respond to speech, but things go south as the police catch on to him. Moreover, the police notice that he has been responsible for disappearances after a report on the woman who turned into a cyborg. And the rest of the tape follows a wild goose chase as the cyborg tries to kill Dr. Suhendra while he also evades the authorities. Eventually, the doctor enables a protocol that drains the cyborg's energy and finally causes her to collapse, but the tape ends with the cyborg regaining her posture and escaping the lab. While a crazed cyborg is left out in the open by the end of the last tape, the final entry in this anthology, Terror, follows a white supremacist extremist group, also known as the First Patriots Movement Militia. This group takes it upon themselves to purge any evil from America, and we soon learn that they have somehow come across a vampire during their hunts. Moreover, they've been shooting the vampire in an attempt to siphon and collect its blood to build a bomb that explodes in sunlight. While they hope to do some large-scale damage with this bomb, things go south as one of the group members steps out into the sunlight while being covered in the vampire's blood and explodes. Soon after, the rest rest of them vow to kill the vampire and get revenge, but the tape ends with a horrid accident wherein the vampire explodes along with the rest of the group and even destroys the compound. VHS 94 was a major hit due to the variety of themes that it covered, ranging from reanimated corpses and rat cults to experimentation gone wrong. It deserves one of the higher spots on this list, and it just might be the best representation of the franchise. The film was also well-loved by audiences and critics alike, and it smashed all records for viewership back in the day. <laughs> VHS 85, 2023. Ranked slightly above its prequel, VHS 85 was a 2023 release and an international co-production between Mexico and the United States. It was the sixth installment in the franchise, and it had five segments, as well as a sixth section that tied the rest of the stories together. This frame narrative was titled Total Copy, and it followed a narrator who presented a documentary on a shapeshifter called Rory. As the movie progresses, the shapeshifter is taught human culture 
by the university experts, and it soon learns how to mutate into a human body. As the story progresses, Rory starts sprouting tentacles and even breaches beyond all her restraints before finally killing one of her researchers and a cameraman. The first tape, No Wake, was directed by Mike Nelson, and it followed seven friends as they made a trip to the lake, and five of them are shot by a sniper while water skiing. However, four of them regain consciousness and soon return to their camp, where they discover that their two other friends are also dead. However, it seems like the lake water had resurrected the four of them when they fell into it after being shot, and they soon use their newfound powers to track down the murderers. Directed by Gigi Sal Guerrero, the second tape, God of Death, followed a Mexican news crew as they covered an alarming earthquake. While they get trapped in the aftershocks, four members of the team come across the altar of an Aztec god named Mictlan, who possesses some of them and draws them to kill one another. The third tape, TKNOGD, was directed by Natasha Cremani, and it followed a performance artist named Ada Lovelace as she performed at a local theater. Her performance emphasizes how God is dead and that the God of technology has replaced him. Her demonstration further includes an incantation to awaken this God, but things go south as this entity gains sentience through the screen and attacks her in the real world. This story especially leaves the audience in shock, as a theater full of people believe that it's all a part of her performance, while Ada's body is ripped apart. Written and directed by Mike Nelson, the fourth tape, Ambrosia, follows the Wrigley family as they celebrate their teen daughter, Ruth. It turns out that Ruth was behind the murder of the seven friends at the lake in one of the previous tapes, and that her family was celebrating her success at this family tradition of murdering people. Ruth even plays a recording of the murders, but things go south as the police break into the house and try to arrest her. Unfortunately, her family members get in the way and try to protect her, but they're all killed off in the shootout. Finally, Ruth manages to kill the last of the police officers, and she then attempts to take her own life but is cursed with the lake's water, which has seemingly also made her immortal. While Ruth mourns the loss of her family and the curse of immortality, the movie moves on to the last tape, Dream Kill. Directed by Scott Derrickson, Dream Kill follows a serial killer who records his murders and sends them to the police, who find a common link behind the tapes. They soon track the recordings down to Bobby and his son Gunther, who soon reveals that their family has the psychic ability to see the future. They also warn the police about the murders, but in a jarring twist of events, Gunther's entire life comes crumbling down as he realizes that his father was the serial killer all along. VHS 85 was a striking anthology of crimes that happened in 1985, and all the tapes followed gruesome murders in one way or the other. The installment received a lot of positive reviews from audiences and critics alike, and some critics even claimed that this was a solid entry in the franchise. VHS 85 also stands out among other anthology series in the sense that all the directors have done an excellent job of bringing a fresh perspective to their stories, and they don't shy away from presenting these tales in the goriest manner possible. VHS 99 2022 VHS 99 was the fifth installment in the series, and it can be best described as a mixtape of five different stories set in 1999. The first tape, Shredding, was directed by Maggie Levin, and it followed a punk rock band that was notorious for pulling pranks on their audience. They once decided to break into a burned-down music arena even after rumors of spirits that tried to possess anyone who entered the place. They even pull a prank on one of their members by acting possessed in front of him, while some members blow up inflatable sex dolls to enact the stampede that had killed all the members of Bitch Cat, a former punk band. However, they don't realize that their actions might set off a series of unfortunate possessions, and the tape eventually ends with all of them being possessed by the dead members of Bitch Cat. The second tape, Suicide Bid, was written and directed by Johannes Roberts, and it followed a young girl named Lily. Lily was desperate to get admitted into her campus's most famous sorority, Beta Sigma Eta, and she even performed forms a suicide bid by applying to just one sorority to catch their attention. They soon invite her out with them and then take them to a graveyard as part of their hazing rituals. Lily is then asked to spend a night inside a coffin to honor another girl named Giltine, who had performed the same deed several years ago. However, Giltine was abandoned by her classmates for about a week, and they returned to the grave to find her missing. Lily decides to go through with the ritual, but freaks out as soon as she gets in the coffin. To make things worse, the 
sorority sisters knock on her coffin and scare her before running off while she discovers giant spiders around her. Things get worse for Lily as Giltine's ghost attacks her, but soon lets her go in exchange for the souls of the other sorority sisters. The next tape was titled Ozzy's Dungeon, and it was directed by Flying Lotus. It followed a children's game show where children had to compete to visit Ozzy's dungeon and fulfill one of their wishes. Unfortunately, one of the competing kids, Donna, ends up injuring herself, and the host's negligence results in Donna becoming permanently crippled. Years later, Donna's mother comes up with an elaborate plan to kidnap the host and subject him to a torturous version of the game. She then finds her way to Ozzy's dungeon, where we finally learn that Donna's ultimate wish was to destroy her entire family by melting their faces off. After a spine-chilling end to Ozzy's dungeon, the following short story, The Gawkers, focuses on a young teenager named Brady. Directed by Tyler McIntyre, this tape followed Brady's attempts at making stop-motion videos despite being bullied by his brother Dylan. Soon enough, Brady becomes friends with a neighbor named Sandra, and even gets invited to her place, much to her brother's anger. Dylan then bullies Brady into installing spyware in Sandra's bedroom, and Dylan's friends gather around to watch her strip when they discover that she has a head full of snakes. They soon realize that she is actually a gorgon, and Sandra catches up on their attempts to spy on her. She turns Brady into stone, and then makes her way to Dylan to ensure that he also meets the same fate. Finally, the anthology wraps up with To Hell and Back, a final tape directed by Vanessa and Joseph Winter. Just like most of the tapes in the franchise, this short story is the found footage format, wherein videographers Nate and Troy are hired by a coven of witches. As they set up their videography equipment, the witches want them to record, while a woman named Kirsten agrees to be a vessel for a demon. They believe that the entire ritual might be a prank, but Nate and Troy are shocked to find out that they are dragged to hell through the witch's altar. What follows is an odyssey through the most bottomless pits of hell as they encounter demons and fight their way through demonic rituals until they both succumb to their injuries. VHS was a record-breaking entry in the franchise, and it essentially marked the revival of the franchise after a long time. It also generated much interest in the next release, VHS 85, and the movie notably received praise for trying new techniques, such as using practical effects. The movie also took a gamble on a new theme of covering common phobias, such as spiders or being buried alive. The aim was to generate fear among the audience while watching these found footage themed tapes, and fans loved the adrenaline rush that came with these storylines. Critics claimed that the movie was the simplest and most innovative entry in the franchise, full of five short stories that pack a punch. VHS Viral 2014 Created by Brad Miska, VHS Viral was the third installment in the series, and it followed three tapes, as opposed to the rest of the movies, which had a minimum of four or five tapes. The movie kicked off with an amateur videographer named Kevin, who often stumbles upon some strange incidents and records them all for himself. While he shoots these videos in the hopes of creating a viral tape, he doesn't realize it when someone manipulates him into releasing them all online. Directed by Greg Bishop, the first tape was titled Dante the Great, and it followed an illusionist who stumbles upon Houdini's famous cloak. Dante soon gains the ability to perform real magic and reaches new heights of popularity while paying a terrible price to continue using the tapes. While the tapes help him get famous, he continuously has to kill and sacrifice women on tape in order to keep the cloak's power intact. Dante then keeps hiring new assistants to sacrifice them until one of the assistants, Scarlet, discovers his crimes and manages to sacrifice him to the cloak. Unfortunately, the cloak picks Scarlet as its new host, and she is doomed to the same fate as Dante. The next tape, Parallel Monsters, was directed by Nacho Vigalando, and it was set around an interdimensional portal that serves as a link between two worlds. An inventor named Alfonso ends up interacting with his alternate version through the portal, and things take a wild turn as he learns that the other worlds follow a divergent religion. He even ends up in a traumatizing sexual encounter with beings from the alternate world and unknowingly attracts his alternate version into his home. While his demonic version attacks his wife, Alfonso has no choice but to stab himself and return to the real world, where he's horrified to learn that his wife is set on killing him for trying to attack him. Doomed by the knowledge of the existence of his alternate version, Alfonso has no idea how to explain the situation to his wife, and he eventually dies as this tape comes to an end. Finally, the third tape, Bone Storm, was created by Justin Benson, and it followed a tree 
trio of skateboarders who tried to catch their stunts on video. Moreover, they hire a videographer who talks them into performing increasingly dangerous stunts for the camera, and things take a turn for the worse as they run into a cult of reanimated corpses. While the trio manages to make a swift escape, their videographer's greed for videos turns out to be his downfall as he is caught behind the cult's monstrous creature. The franchise went on a long break after the release of this installment which was rather short but deathly terrifying at the same time. The movie did have a fourth tape titled Gorgeous Vortex, but it was cut after it did not fit the film's found footage theme. This anthology series did not receive rave reviews, but it remains to be a cult classic in the found footage genre. It creates an environment of panic and terror as we can witness everything that went wrong as it happens, including all the raw footage and unpredictable events that fall into the protagonist's way. VHS spin-offs. While that was all about our top rankings for the VHS franchise, let us now look at a couple of spin-offs, such as Siren and Kids vs. Aliens, which were inspired by the original tapes. Siren 2016. Directed by Greg Bishop, Siren was the first VHS spin-off and was essentially a feature-length adaptation of the Amateur Night segment of the original VHS film. It follows the same plot, wherein Jonah, a to-be groom, hosts a bachelor night with his groomsmen where all goes wrong. They hope to embark on a night of partying and fun, but things take a turn when they end up unleashing a succubus named Lilith, who is intent on taking Jonah away with him. Like the short story segment, Siren Siren creates a sense of suspense and essentially serves as a clever expansion of the tale. The movie drew in many viewers, and it received positive reviews from critics as well. In fact, it was featured in a list of top 10 feature films upon its release, and it is said to be a standalone film that should be viewed as a lot more than just an adaptation. Kids vs. Aliens 2022 Just like Siren, Kids vs. Aliens was also a recent adaptation of the short story Slumber Party Alien Abduction from VHS2. It premiered on September 23, 2022, and it followed the same chaotic bunch of kids who stirred up trouble in the original film. While a short story might be lacking in some places to set the context for the kids' pranks or the actual nature of the alien abduction, this spin-off manages to fill in all of these blanks. Fans also believe that this movie added a touch of goofy comedy to an otherwise terrifying environment, while critics stated that the plot was a bit rushed. However, the movie did have some fantastic costumes and special effects, and certainly had a lot of potential. Marvelous Verdict. And with that, we've covered every single movie in the VHS franchise, ranging from the original tapes to the spin-offs. They're also a wonderful pick for a Halloween horror marathon, with tons of spine-chilling short stories that come together to form some stellar anthologies. While the sequel remains the topmost ranked film in our eyes, we're sure that you might be impartial to some of the other entries on the list, and we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.